So, Blida, we are live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So, thank you very much for joining us today. And so, let's uh, wait a few seconds. Uh, our viewers will join us. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, our viewers already is here. So, good evening. Dear friends, Bishkek American Center is welcoming you and we hope that you're all doing well and great. And um, we are very happy to continue our regular program, uh, virtual U.S. Uh, state tours. And today we are going to visit Arkansas with Lida Lee. Uh, so um, let's, let me introduce our special guest speaker today, Lida Lee. She's a returned uh, Peace Corps volunteer. She served in Kyrgyz Republic in our country during two years, in 2015 until 2017. Uh, so, and uh, she worked with NGO or Epkin, and uh, originally she's from uh, Arkansas State. And currently she resides in Washington, D.C. area, where she is program management analyst and uh, at uh, uh, Peace Corp headquarters. So, Lida will make a presentation about your home uh, state, Arkansas, and uh, dear friends, be active, uh, ask questions, comment, and uh, Lida will answer them after the presentation. So, Lida, I give the floor you. So, please, let's start our session. Thank you so much, Mahabat. Uh, I'm so excited and so honored to be here with you all and very excited to present and talk a little bit about my state that I grew up in, Arkansas, as mentioned. So let me go ahead and share my screen and start presenting. I hope everyone is doing well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's doing healthy. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Mahabat, can is can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, we see your screen, so. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, as mentioned, I was a, I'm a returned Peace Corps volunteer, so I was a volunteer in Kyrgyzstan in Epkin, and which is in Iskata Rayon. And so I have very fond memories and just, I absolutely love my time in Kyrgyzstan. And so, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me anyways. So I am originally from the state of Arkansas and uh, it is located near Texas, as you can see in the Southern part of Arkansas, uh, the United States, sorry. And it's motto or the, the little saying that we have to go with each state, the nickname, uh, it's called the natural state. And I will explain why, and you'll probably see throughout the pictures as to why it is called the natural state, but if you can see in this map over here, there's a lot of forests, there's a lot of trees, there's some mountains, there's rivers and uh, lakes, and that's mostly which is why we call it the natural state, just a lot of natural uh, greenery and scenery. So here we have a picture of the Arkansas state flag, uh, and then its population is just under 3 million people. The capital of Arkansas is Little Rock. The state tree is the pine tree. The state flower is the apple blossom. The state bird is the mockingbird. And Arkansas is the largest producer of rice in the United States. So here are a few pictures of things that I just mentioned. Uh, up here to the top left of my screen, we have some rice fields and so there's a lot of farming in Arkansas and especially rice is grown since it is the largest producer of rice in the United States. In the middle we have a picture of a pine tree and another example of pine tree uh, would be Christmas trees and so Christmas trees have those little needles you know the short pine needles on them and so uh, that is our state tree because it is found all over uh, Arkansas. To the right, we have uh, an example of a mockingbird. And then to the bottom left, we have a photo of 
apple blossoms, which are the flowers that uh, grow on apple trees. And, and it's when um, attached to the apple or they grow into the apples in some way. So Arkansas used to have many apples uh, grown in the state, but it's not so many now, it's not as much, so. If you were to visit <clears throat> Arkansas, you will see this logo or picture on the left here uh, on clothes, on hats, on uh, cars everywhere. It's just a really popular uh, symbol in some ways to Arkansas. And it's the Razorback Hog. So the largest <laughs> university in Arkansas is the University of Arkansas, which is in Fayetteville and it's in Northern Arkansas. And the mascot of the university is the Razorback Hog. And so to the right, you see a picture of the actual animal. And if you can see the top, the back here, it kind of looks like short little razors, which is why it's named so. And then also I've been told, or from what I've read and heard, uh, the university decided on this, on this mascot because Razorback hogs, when there's a lot of them, and if they're cornered or they feel threatened, they can become very dangerous and very wild. And so therefore, a lot of the, they thought it was a good animal to represent the athletic teams because we have basketball teams, football teams, and baseball teams, those kind of activities that are really competitive and popular. So the Razorback Hogs. In the North, as I previously mentioned, uh, they, there are some mountains located there and it's, it goes into, it starts in um, Northern Arkansas and it also goes into Southern Missouri. And those are called the Ozark Mountains. And it's very famous in the region because it's beautiful up there. You can see there's a lot of, you know, mountains and greenery, but it's most famous for its fall foliage, uh, foliage, sorry, in the fall, in the autumn. And that's when the color, the trees just turn into these beautiful yellow, orange, reds, and it's just absolutely beautiful up there. So we have the Ozark Mountains up there. Amazing views, very beautiful. <laughs> yes. In Arkansas, as I mentioned, we have a lot of rivers and a lot of lakes. And so some of, therefore, a lot of water activities are popular in, in Arkansas. And so a few examples are kayaking, canoeing. Uh, we have this activity called floating the river. There's water skiing, uh, wakeboarding, kneeboarding, and tubing. And so to kind of show examples of these things so that you have a better idea, this picture uh, that my mouse is on, hopefully you can all see that. You have some canoes here and then you have kayaks. And so they're very similar, but canoes are a little bit larger and they can fit more people to sit and row. Whereas kayaking is mostly for only one or two people and they're a little bit uh, more narrow. What is also really popular in Arkansas is white water rafting, which I forgot to put, I left off accidentally on this list, but that's, you can see that up here to the upper right. And in Arkansas, there are three major rivers. We have the Arkansas River, we have the Buffalo River, and we also have the, what is the last river? Sorry, the, mm -hmm. I believe it's the White River. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so the Arkansas River though is really famous mm -hmm. because it's such a large river. It actually begins in Colorado, and then it runs through Kansas and Oklahoma, and then it ends in Arkansas, where it runs into the Mississippi River. But this activity uh, is really popular, and you have a you have to have a group. You can't really go white water rafting alone or with a few people. Uh, and then you have to have a guide in the back who kind of instructs you and leads you and helps you uh, navigate because you it's mostly popular where in sections of the river where it's very fast <clears throat> and there are a lot of rapids or currents or 
which is essentially areas that suddenly become shallow. Uh, and there's usually a lot of rocks in the area, so it makes it go fast. So oh, that's wow. what we're after. Yeah. And then we also here I have on the bottom, that's called tubing. So uh, it's just a summer activity where you go get a, a flated, inflated tube and you just float. You relax and you just float along the river and enjoy your time and, and swim. And, and it's really Ooh. fun. Okay. So here, just to show a little bit, a few more examples of the other sports, these are more commonly uh, performed on the lakes that we have around here. So there's this thing called tubing and it's a big inflated tube and you hold on to it and it's uh, attached to the boat. And so the boat will go fast and then uh, it'll make sudden turns. And so you have to try and stay on this big raft. And I think, I think uh, I saw this as well in Issaquah. If I remember, nice. I think yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but you have to be careful because I, I remember growing up, there's a speed limit because if you go too fast or make too many uh, turns, sharp turns, these can, you know, flip in the air and it, yeah, it, yeah it's very dangerous as well. Uh, here in the middle, that's called kneeboarding. And so it's when you're kind of surfing on your knees. Uh, to the right, you have some water skiing. And then we have wakeboarding. So water skiing is with two boards and wakeboarding is with one board. So I wanted to just show a little video. I won't play the whole thing, but just to kind of show what they do with wakeboarding. Okay. <laughs> In the wake right now. Zara Kel getting ready, getting set to go OFF. Start things off with that Tootsie roll, the toe side front roll, backside 180. Now coming back in on her heels, going upside down and all the way around. That's the Whirly Bird, the full twisting backflip. Now going back in opposite heels, cap 540, starting out switch, landing at regular and doing 540 degrees of rotation in between. One last trick down here at the end of pass number one. Nice, slow and easy. So that is an example of wakeboarding. And so they do a lot of tricks. They use the waves to perform those tricks and flips and turns. So Yeah, it's like, it looks like very exciting and very dangerous. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I was never really good at it uh, and, or anything. I liked to. I like the more floating, calming <laughs> activity. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay, now let me go here. So I want to transition a little bit into music. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the northern part of Arkansas, the Ozark area, is really unique. There's a lot more. Uh, it's more kind of mountain area and, and rural. So it's uh, a different kind of lifestyle up there. And the music, though, is very unique to the area and region as well. It's, there's some, you know, in Arkansas, there's you have your typical music like the pop music and rock music or uh, hip hop and stuff and rap. But uh, there's two kinds of music that's a little bit more not common. You know, you don't really hear it on the radio, the top hits or anything, but it is unique to the northern part of Arkansas. And so it's bluegrass and then Ozark folk music. And technically bluegrass can be considered a part of folk music. Folk music is really, is a type of genre or name that we give uh, for those music that's really talks about home or your emotions tied to where you live and, and tied to the your surroundings um, more uh, and to be more uh, precise about that. And then it's also usually uh, you have guitars, you have, so for mandolin, uh, sorry, for the bluegrass and the folk music, you have, you see these common instruments played with it. 
And so you had the mandolin and the banjo, which they're both kind of similar to a guitar. I believe there's a little bit more, less strings perhaps on the banjo or the mandolin. And then it's, uh, we also have the fiddle, which is another word for a violin. And just a fun fact that I learned as well when I was creating this presentation is, so bluegrass, uh, it gets its name from this popular band that is credited to be the origin of bluegrass music. It would, they were called Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. And they're from Kentucky. And in Kentucky, I think their state plant or so is called the bluegrass, or it's really popular in Kentucky. And you can see it's grass that kind of has this color, blue color to it. And so um, bluegrass got its name from this band. And so it's also different from each other because bluegrass is mostly instrumental. So there's no, not really any lyrics or words sung to it with it. It's usually just the music and it's very fast. Whereas folk music is still pretty fast, but you have words and, and it's sung and lyrics. And uh, the other thing that's unique about these two music style or genre is that, you know, usually we have a beat, right? With music, it's like, there's a beat to it, but these music, uh, they focus, the instrument part focus on the offbeat. So um, whereas we would clap here, the emphasis would be on the beats in between when I'm clapping instead. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play a little bit of these, for example, so you can okay. kind of hear, okay? Yeah. So the first one is an example of bluegrass. And remember, there's no words or lyrics, it's just instruments. Okay. Bluegrass. Now I'm yeah. going to give an example of folk music. There's places far away and a little mountain play days long ago. I said I'll me and she talked to sing me. I love her voice and that she screamed Oh, love will always linger. I can see her day by day. She sat there in that little cabin home. Oh, the house is going away and the fields of grass are gray. I'll never forget the hoes are mountain. Oh, I bow my head in sorrow for the noon in tomorrow in that little mountain lay there in the hill. I'm going back and build a shack by that little mound of play. I'm going back and build a shack in those old arcades for a Okay, so that's an example of folk music. Yeah, it's very cool and very interesting. Yeah, it's a little different. So it's it's kind of similar to country music if you've ever listened to country music. No. Okay. Oh. You did. All right. So next, which is my favorite part, I is the food. I, like, scene. I, like <laughs> uh, I was I was telling Mahabad earlier. I said, you know. We talked a little bit about languages that I learned when I was a volunteer, and I said, but I did learn some Russian, and but my Russian was very limited to food, <laughs> and so I, I, it's important for me that when I went into Bishkek, I need to I needed to know my foods and, and how to read the menu. So, uh, food. So these are a little bit unique to Arkansas. We have a thing called Tex-Mex. And that's these two pictures at the top kind of show what Tex-Mex kind of looks like. Uh, and it's 
it's Mexican food because it originated from um, from Mexico and Texas. They're they're neighbors and they share a border, and so it's, of course these foods have influenced that region and into Arkansas a little bit. And so what's different is that <clears throat> these Mexican styled or, or originated food uh, have a little spin or twist to them to fit it, to make it fit more with the palates or the, the preferences of people in, in Texas or in Arkansas or in the United States. And so they're usually a little bit more spices to them. They have more meat and more cheese, which you don't normally find, I think, in some of the traditional Mexican food. And so a popular thing that we have is this thing called white queso, or queso is the Spanish word for cheese. And so mm -hmm. there's this up here. And actually, this is a huge debate and between Arkansas and Texas, there's a competition, uh, I think every year or, but it, it's more of a recent competition to see which state has the best white queso. And so I, you know, it's a little thing, but it's so popular whenever you go to a, a Tex-Mex restaurant, you will definitely probably order some cheese dip or white queso to as an appetizer. And that's just a really popular thing. Uh, another thing, and so I did note here, it's kind of for the little, uh, when I was in Kyrgyzstan, we discovered this little stand. I think it's a restaurant now. I'm not sure it's, there's been some time since I was last in Kyrgyzstan. So I, you know, I'm not sure if it's still there, but I think there's a, it's a restaurant now and it's called Burrito. And it's in, I think, Southern Bishkek. And uh, they have a type of Tex-Mex, which are called burritos. And uh, so if you want to, if it's still there, you know, you should definitely go and try and see, go and visit it and, and have a little taste of Tex-Mex and have a taste of a burrito. It was very delicious. Mm. I remember that. I would go there sometimes when I was missing home. And so that was very oh. nice. Yes. So another common thing in Arkansas and in the South in general is barbecue, American barbecue. And that's smoked meat, you know, usually beef and pork, sometimes chicken as well. I know Texas is really famous for its chicken uh, barbecue, but it's usually pork and beef. And it's just meat that's been smoked and cooked for a very long time, for hours. Sometimes, you know, I think like overnight, a whole 24 hours, very long time. And it has, it's just very delicious. Certain places in the South uh, have different kinds of barbecue. Sometimes you can have sauces to make it a little bit more, uh, more moist. And so some states are famous for a sweeter or more ketchup based barbecue sauce, while some states have more of a vinegar based sauce. And Arkansas is more along the lines of a of a of a ketchup tomato -y kind of sweeter sauce based barbecue. And uh, yeah, so there's a little picture of that down here. And there is a place in Bishkek where it has very similar to American style of barbecue and it's called Smokies. And that's also in Bishkek. And so when I was really, really missing home, I would visit there sometimes uh, as well. And it was very, I think it was pretty authentic, honestly. And they've, uh, it was absolutely delicious and it was wonderful. So, and then the last thing that's very, I think more unique to Arkansas and and the states there that have more um, lakes and rivers is our catfish. And so it's a type of fish that's found in rivers and lakes. And here's a picture of them. They're called catfish because they have these whiskers that comes out from near the mouth. So it kind of looks like cats, right? Uh, but they're very delicious and they can, they, some parts of the state you can find very huge catfish, literally, like this big and uh, it's 
very popular fishing. Fishing is also very popular in Arkansas and, and hunting, but uh, so yes, yeah, so fishing for catfish is very popular. And so we like to eat them as well and they can be fried or they can be grilled, but it's so delicious and uh, usually dip it, but you put some lemon on top and you dip it in some sauce, uh, tartar sauce, which is usually for fish and it's very, very yummy. Um. The next thing I wanna talk about is this place called Hot Springs, Arkansas. And this is located in Southwest Arkansas. Uh, and just a brief mention, it, it's, a, it's actually a national park. It's one of the state's only, uh, one or two national parks. So it's, uh, it's very unique in that it has these geothermal um, waters that you can find in, in this area and region. And, and so it's these hot water, you know, like streams and rivers, but it's, it's heated and you can see the steam here just from the, the earth underneath the ground, it, it just naturally makes it very hot. It's kind of like a cicada, essentially. <laughs> uh, and so this area, it's called Bathhouse Row in the center of the city. And so because of this, there are a lot of uh, bathhouses or I believe like sanatoriums in, in, in uh, Kyrgyzstan, I think they're called sanatoriums. And so people from all over the US and even the world sometimes would come and visit them for its natural uh, health reasons and, and spas. And, uh, and so it's very unique. They still have one that's open as a museum that you can visit and everything's been you know renovated or they kept it more traditional, but updated a little bit to show you what it looks like in its prime time. And it's very interesting. And then they have one that was renovated or uh, reconstructed to still be used today. And he, there's a picture of that bottom. So you can still visit it and kind of uh, see what it was like and, and still be in a spa. Uh, but most of them have now been turned into either a museum or a restaurant or stores instead. So it's not really uh, used for hot springs, like for spa reasons as much now. Uh, but they do have a part, a, a place there where this water then becomes treated to where you can drink it. And so you can just take a jug or a container and you can just fill the water with this delicious, you know, clean tasting uh, natural water for free. So anyone can go and, and have some of this water. So that's really fun and unique to, to that area and to Arkansas. We also have a place also in Murfreesboro, Arkansas. So Hot Spring was up here and Murfreesboro is down here, Southwest Arkansas. And it's called Crater of Diamond State Park. It is the only diamond mine in the United States that is open to the public. And so people will go and dig for, try to dig for diamonds and you get to keep it. If you find a diamond, you get to keep the diamond. I would say oh. that, yeah. So I would say that maybe one person will find a diamond in every two to three years. You know, this, their average size that's found are, are about this size. It's a little bit smaller or than a quarter. And so they're not, not too big, but still it's very exciting, it's fun, and it's you get to keep it if you find it. But it's not often that you get to find these diamond mines, unfortunately. But it's a fun activity and it's unique. So next I'm going to move over to Hope, Arkansas, which is very close to, uh, to where the diamond mine is as well, in southern southwest Arkansas. And so Hope Watermelons, I believe are world famous uh, in some world famous, but also just very famous in our state because they're some of the best watermelons that you can buy in Arkansas. And they have these competitions, they to see who can grow the largest watermelons. And I think, you know, 
uh, I believe Hope, Arkans Hope watermelons have been some of the largest in the world and the US and um, they have a big festival usually every year. And that includes like watermelon eating contest to see who can eat a whole watermelon the fastest. And so here's some pictures of children doing that. Uh, and so I grew up eating watermelons all the time. I loved it. And so I was very happy when I went to Kyrgyzstan and there was Darbus. I, I absolutely love the watermelons as well in Kyrgyzstan and uh, it's one of my favorite fruits. So I think that's a kind of a, it was definitely something that was comforting when I was also missing home. <laughs> oh, so fun fact about Hope has, you know, if anyone has heard of Bill Clinton, he was uh, a president of the United States and he was actually born and, and grew up as a child in Hope, Arkansas. So fun fact which is now moving on to the last little slide here about the Clinton Presidential Museum. And that's and, and that's in Little Rock. And uh, just because we have, not every state has a president uh, from there. And, and President Clinton was previously also a governor of Arkansas and then he became the president of the United States in the nineties. And, uh, and so, What's common in the United States here is to build a museum after the president leaves office to kind of uh, just to house all of his memories and memorabilia and documents in this place and, and uh, their home state. So that's a little fun place that you can also visit if you were to come to Arkansas. That's unique. And that is the end of my presentation. Those are uh, I wanted to share a little bit more unique things about Arkansas. Obviously, you can find, you know, I think previously mentioned in some of the other presentations, just common food and music and stuff like that. But I wanted to highlight the more unique things about Arkansas. Um, so, first of all, thank you very much for the great presentation. I'm sure that uh, me and our we our viewers uh, get a lot of information, a lot of new facts about Arkansas. So thank you, and uh, our viewers will be able to see this video later. And uh, we received a lot of questions, so okay. let me ask them for you. So the the first one, hi Lida, and. Uh, So what attracts people the most of all in Arkansas? That's a great question, Idai. Thank you for asking it. So I would say it's one or two things. And that's definitely just, as I mentioned, all the natural you know, scenery, the, the lakes, the mountains, the hiking that you can do, camping. Um, and also just it's a little bit more relaxed. You know, it's the the feel is just more relaxing in Arkansas in general. And so a lot of people like to go visit Arkansas to have a calm, quiet and relaxing time in nature. So mm -hmm. and have the second question here. What sports are popular in Arkansas or are there any unusual type of sports? Uh, so. I talked a little bit about the lake and water sports and that's popular in Arkansas. Uh, but if you're talking about more like competition, uh, you know, I, I believe the first presenter who presented on California, he, you know, California is a very large state. So they have a lot of sports there that are big, you know, recognized around the United States. We don't have that <laughs> as uh, it, because Arkansas is a smaller state. In, in terms of population. And so, but we do have a lot of football. Football is very American football, not not football as soccer, but American football is very popular in Arkansas as well as baseball and then basketball, I would say are the more commonly uh, played sports in that sense. And then, yeah, I, and you know, I think some people don't consider it sports, but also fishing 
it, it's not necessarily an activity that's, you know, a sport mm -hmm. per se. But, uh, some do argue that it takes skills to fish. And so fishing is also very popular as well. Okay, thank you very much. The next question is, what is unique to your home state? Well, I think hopefully the presentation covered a little bit of it, but just, I would say the diamond, you know, the diamond mine is very unique to Arkansas. It's the only one that's open to the public that you can go and actually dig for diamonds. Uh, and then just in general, you know, the Southern states in general are, have some unique qualities to it. And, and I think it kind of also can be said about Arkansas. It's similar, but different. And I, can't explain that very well because it's more of a sense of feeling personally. But yeah, I, I, I would say if, if you're wanting to find one thing specific that's unique, it would be the diamond mine probably. Mm -hmm. So Okay, next question is, does Arkansas produce something? They do. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the rice, they produce rice. So and it is there the question about the, the diamond <laughs> again but you can yeah so have you ever walked there in this park and try to find some diamonds for you <laughs> maybe your I friends have, maybe <laughs> I have not. uh and this is the reason i mean i would love to go back now i think and try it. The thing is, as I said, it's you don't. It's very rare to find a diamond, and so in my mindset, it's oh, in the summers it can get very hot. And so usually, I lived in Arkansas as a most as a child and a university student. So I didn't exactly have time to go because it's about two hours away from my hometown drive, mm -hmm. and so and I was young, and so I didn't think it was fun to go in the summers when I had free time and it's very hot and humid to go dig for diamonds that I probably wouldn't find diamonds. And so, you know, growing up, I didn't think that was a very, something I wanted to do, but I definitely want to do that now just to have that experience now that I'm older and more mature. I think it'd be fun. So thank you very much. So <laughs> next question is, what's your, your favorite place in, in Arkansas? My favorite place, I haven't actually been to every part of Arkansas, uh, but I would say I really do, I did enjoy going up through the Ozark Mountain area. It's really beautiful. And I've only been through there twice because that's about five hour drive from my hometown. And I just never really made it up that far often. Uh, but I would also home my hometown of Arkadelphia. It's near Hot Springs and it's near Hope. You know, that's my favorite place because I get to go home and my mother still lives there. So to see her and visit oh. her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, what food is native for Arkansas and what is your favorite one? Uh, I don't think there's one food that's just native or, you know, especially unique to Arkansas. As I mentioned, you have barbecue, you have the Tex-Mex food, but that's more common, not just in Arkansas. Uh, but I would say, as I was saying, though, the even the barbecue, it's very, there's different kinds of barbecue in different states. And, uh, and so barbecue is one of my favorites. I don't get to eat that very often. And it's probably not super healthy to eat it too often, <laughs> which is a good thing, but I love it. And it's, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's just very uh, comforting. So I think it was the last question from our viewers, but <laughs> the only one question for you. And what was the memorable thing that you uh, got in, in Kyrgyz Republic during your, your volunteering? I think for me, there just one memorable thing it's kind of it's very yeah. hard to, to say just one thing because it was such a unique and different experience as a whole but I my takeaway I guess you could say from my Peace Corps service and my time in Kurdistan is just 
it's beautiful. It's a beautiful country. You know, you have the, you have, uh, oh, I can't think of the name right now, but there's another very, Al Archa, Al right? Al Archa, Al yeah. Yeah. Al Archa, and, you know, you have the school and you have uh, the, oh my goodness, I can't think of the name right now, but uh, just the, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful country. And, and I also, my other big takeaway was just the hospitality, you know, the Konoks. I think that it, it's, or Chaich, <laughs> uh, it's very, very unique and very, yeah, in every home, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and so like, I think that was just so memorable for me because anywhere you go, you know, Kyrgyz people were just very warm and hospitable and they would stop what they're doing. If they have a guest, then they stop, you chai each, you talk, you get to know each other. And it's it was no matter where you go in Kurdistan, every home would do that. And that was, I think is very unique. You don't necessarily find that anywhere else in the world where people just open up their doors and homes and, and like that. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Lida. So it's time to close our conversation and I would like to thank you, Lida, for your time, for your great presentation and I'm sure that our audience uh, got uh, something new for them from uh, from you about Arkansas. So thank you. Thank you very much and um, uh, thank you. And also I would like to thank our viewers for being us and um, Hope uh, see you next uh, session. So have a Lida, have a nice day. <laughs> and for our viewers, have a nice weekend and see you next session. So bye bye to all. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Bye.